It's Organic September and we're focusing on grass-fed systems. We're really excited that there are so many farmers doing pioneering practices to improve the diversity and nutrition of their grasses. We know this is great for animal health and it's great for soil health. In this field here in my family farm, uh, we're standing in something called a herbal lay. And what that means is we're planting lots of different herbs and lots of different grasses and clovers to try and get all of the plants to communicate and work together to take uh, lots of different nutrients from the air, drive it into the soil and they can then use it to grow. So in my hand here you can see we've got lots of different plants. We've got some chicory, we've got some plantain, we've got clover, we've got grasses and all of this is here in my soils that we've planted. The benefits to this is that because all of the plants are communicating, they're sharing nutrients, they're helping each other grow. When the cows come in as well, it doesn't matter what time of the summer there is, there's always some protein in here, there's always some fibre, there's always some, some really high energy grassland to eat. And the result of all that is when the cows come in here, it's like they're eating a really diverse salad. We as organic farmers, without the, the benefits of, of using fertilisers and chemicals, we can grow very natural grasses and different plants here to feed our cows and also get very similar levels of milk production as to feeding cereals as well. So with all the benefits of the multi-species sword that we've been talking about, we really do see this as the future of our farm here at Mesquil. Bryce Cunningham there, showing us the benefits of running his cows through those beautiful herbal lays. And there's other benefits too of farmers growing local feed. We need to reduce our dependence on imported soy and keep those precious landscapes intact, like the Amazon. Let's hear from Hugh Grayson. So this is a field of oats, uh, oats and peas in fact, that we've grown to feed our livestock, the pigs and the chickens. Um, so we have a six year rotation, three years of grass and clover, building the fertility, uh, and then three years of cropping, taking crops off that can feed uh, the, the, the animals that don't eat grass, basically. Peas grow up uh, in between the oats. They're not quite as high at the moment, um, but the oats come up on top and then the peas work their way up. Uh, it catches more daylight, uh, it increases the yield, uh, partly because the peas feed the oat crops uh, and partly because it all holds it, the, the oats then hold the peas up uh, and dry them out ready for combining. And at the end of the day, I get a higher protein feed uh, that feeds my livestock without buying in so much soya. Uh, and that's, um, that's a great thing if I can grow protein in my field at the same time for free and my feed then is an extra 3% protein uh, and grows the, the, the birds, the chickens, much better. Growing the two crops together improves the, the, the soil, uh, partly just because they produce nitrogen and, and help the, the other crop, the other, share it with the other plants so that they grow. But also having the combination has been found to increase the amount of carbon that's pushed into the soil by the crops. So at the end of the day, we get higher soil organic matter, uh, which helps retain moisture, nutrients, all the things we need to grow better crops. This is the future of farming. We need to move away from intensive farming systems. We need to support those that are better for animal welfare, better for the planet, and better for nature.